Hey, it is Kenny for Kenny's ID File Rec Reviews. Thank you very much for you, my channel. As always, if you're new to my channel, please like and subscribe. That'll help me out. It's cool doing these videos. I'm hit you up with another one. This video idea came from watching a, um, a, a video from this great YouTuber, this great uh, YouTuber who's part of the VC. He has his own record store. His name is Dylan. The name of his uh, YouTube channel is um, Noble Records. This dude is great at these videos. I'm a huge fan of his. And he did this video, 10 albums that I could not live without. So I thought I'd give my take on that video. Uh, like I said, the idea came from Dylan from uh, Noble Records. I'll leave the link to his video in the uh, description below if I can remember. So I'm going to give my take, uh, at least my opinion on the 10 records I can't live without. Um, oh, oh! before I get started, if you cannot see this uh, album in the background, this is Vaughn box set. It's probably not coming out because of the lighting. I bought this when it came out, I think in the mid 80s. This is part of a huger, huge, huge uh, a bigger box set of Saravon. So I got to listen to this. I hadn't listened to that in years. It's a four LP set. At least I think it's four LP set. And I'll have to listen to that soon. It's uh, the complete Saravon on Mercury Records. But um, yeah, now my top, this top 10 um, are albums that hit me in the right way musically at the right time of my life and left a, a lasting impression for whatever reason during certain periods of my life. Now, they may not be uh, some of the best albums I've heard. Uh, a lot of them are not in my uh, top 10 jazz album or top 10 albums of all time or top 10 fusion album uh, uh, albums. Um, a few of them are, but a lot of them aren't because some of these are special to me. And um, like I said, they hit me in the right way at the right time of my life. So I included these on the 10 albums that I cannot live without. You think I can easily just uh, take all the albums from my top 10 list. But no, these are, are, are special in a different way. So I'm going to get started with Earth, Wind, and Fire. This 1975 work of musical art. That's the way of the world. My older brother had this album, so I was listening to his at the time. I was 14 when this came out, 1975, because I turned 15 later in the year. And this is just, just all the way, all the way through the compositions, how they fit, and how they uh, seamlessly fit together. And it's a, a magnificent album. It's just. Fantabulous. Um, I seen them once in person, and at the time they put on a great show. Earth, Wind, and Fire. That's the way of the world. Is one album that I would say I could not live without. Another album is not going to make anybody's list because uh, it's just not because a lot of people aren't into this artist in that way in the VC. But I am. Um, this artist's name is uh, Rod McEwen, the poet and singer Rod McEwen. And this is the first Rod McEwen album I purchased. It's called Rod McEwen's Greatest Hits. And I first brought this album my freshman year college, 1979. And I really enjoyed the lyrics on this album because he's not a great singer. But I really enjoyed the lyrics and his uh, written word. And it got, really got me into buying more and more Rob McEwen albums. As a matter of fact, amongst all the records I have in my collection, I have more Rob McEwen records than any other artist. Miles Davis and everybody. I have more Rob McEwen records than anybody else. I was blessed to meet him. And he sent me a few records and a few autograph books. And that was kind of him to do that. But this left a, a lasting impression on me. Because... Um, like I said, his his lyrics are so deep. Not the greatest singer in the world, but his lyrics so, are so deep and uh, very entertaining. So I had to include this on my 10 records that I could not live without. Another record that was issued in 1978, I believe, during the summer. I was 17 at the time. 
and this left a lasting impression on me. This is one of the records I cannot uh, live without. This makes my top 10 list. Herbie Hancock, Sunlight. Now this album is an album where he's playing multiple instruments, multiple keyboards simultaneously. And he's singing through a vocoder. Herbie Hancock is singing on his album. And at the time, at the age of 17, I was heavy in this album. because At the time, I thought it was fabulous, great to listen to, very entertaining. The compositions were tight, and I still feel the same to this day. Now, you might say, Kenny, what about, I don't know, Maiden Voyage? Or, you know, Headhunters? Now, both those albums are better than this one. But this left a lasting impression on me. And musically, it hit me at the right time in the right way. So this makes my list of 10 albums I cannot live without. 1978 Herbie Hancock, Sunlight, where Herbie Hancock sings. Now, this is an album of um, basically a singer who's singing Rod McEwen songs. His name is uh, Glenn Yarborough. And on this album, it's called The Lonely Things. The Love Songs of Rod McEwen. This is a fantastic album if you like uh, Glenn Yarborough. Matter of fact, there's a stereo. I've got the mono. Uh, I too, I think I bought this during my freshman year of college, maybe the year after that. And he really interprets uh, Rod McEwen's music and written word uh, greatly. So I became a huge Glenn Yarborough fan thereafter. He had this hit somewhere around 1963, 1964. I think it was called Baby the Rain Must Fall, which I think it was nominated for a Grammy, I believe. But he had a beautiful, soft voice. Um, and like I said, he interprets Rob McEwen's words and music amazingly. So I had to include... Uh, this album and top 10 uh, records I could not uh, live without. No, oh, by the way, these aren't in any, any particular order. And, uh, Glenn Yarbrough was formerly of the group, or in the group, The Limelighters, before he went solo. Another album is an album by Weather Report. And this is my first Weather Report album that I purchased when I was in high school. I was 17. And it's called Mr. Gone. Now, this is not even close to being the best um, Weather Report album. But I was so into the vibe and groove of this album. And I went, this is, may not be necessarily a jazz fusion record. I guess it is, but it's not a strong jazz fusion record. It's almost like a electronic type of uh, record where uh, Joe Zawinul, our lead keyboard player, was heavily featured. And uh, there's this um, great p composition called Punk Jazz punk jazz that uh, features uh, Jocko Pastorius on this album. When I purchased it in high school, I thought this was fa uh, fabulous. And when I purchased this, I became a fan of Weather Report. And I bought virtually all their albums after that and went back and purchased albums before this. But this left a lasting impression on me. And this is one of the albums that like I said, it hit me strong at the right time in high school. And I, I had to add this to the 10 albums I could not live without because uh, what it has, the impact it had on me musically in terms of the direction of, of music I was listening to, the direction of jazz fusion I was listening to, and particularly Weather Report. This album came out in 1976, I believe. I was in the 10th grade, I believe. Dr. Buzzard's original Savannah event. A band featuring Corey Day on vocals. He had this hit song called uh, Sure Says La Film. Now, I'm probably mispronouncing that name, but when I was taking a bus to high school and my uh, bus driver had this, uh, the, the radio to a popular music channel, I couldn't wait for that uh, song to come on. Matter of fact, this, this album, the entire side one of this album is fantastic. This is a combination, I think, uh, big band, uh, disco, and soul. That mix. And Corey Day was a lead singer. Great album. Dr. Buzzard's original Savannah, Savannah Band. I believe this came out in 1976. 
check out the first side of this album, if not the entire album. This spiritual jazz, this creative jazz album, which this artist put everything he had into this album. It's number one on my jazz, greatest jazz albums of all time video. A Love Supreme by Job Coltrane. Makes my top ten albums I could not, cannot live without. Fabulously uh, conceived. The compositions are tight. Um, the playing is very invigorating. It just keeps you uh, captivated in the listening session. So this had to make, uh, make my top ten albums I cannot live without. Now this album is another album that's not going to make anybody's list, but it makes mine. And that is, and that's the list that matters, by the way, at least to me. This artist is named Claudine Langer, and I'm going to tell you why this uh, this album is on my list. Claudine, Claudine Langer. Now, those of you who came up during that era do realize that Claudine Langer got into some legal trouble. I think he was involved in the, uh, I think, the murder of uh, Spider Savage. Uh, she was involved with that. She was formerly uh, married to Andy Williams. And um, matter of fact, soon after in the mid-70s, she disappeared. And you rarely, you don't see anything about her on, on the internet or any current pictures. So she knows how to disappear. But the reason why this album made my list is the greatest song I've ever heard is on this album. It's called uh, the song from uh, Fiddler on a Roof, I think it is. The name of the song is Sunrise Sunset. And her version of Sunrise Sunset is the greatest version of this song that I ever heard, and it's my favorite uh, song of all time. So this album makes my list by Claudine Langer on A&M Records. This album, the greatest jazz fusion record album of all time, very influential to me in terms of uh, my love for jazz fusion. And this is a jazz fusion, in my opinion, at its best. I realize that's debatable. This is my opinion. Miles Davis. Bitches Brew, the masterpiece, Miles Davis's masterpiece is, as far as I'm concerned. This makes my top 10 albums that I can't live without. This album left, a, again, a lasting impression on me in terms of my love for this band. Sergio Mendes in Brazil 66, and the name of the album is Fool on the Hill. Now, this has great covers of Fool on a Hill, Scarborough Fair. Other great songs on here is When a Summer uh, Turns to uh, Snow. And uh, uh, Festa is an underrated song. Sergio Mendes in Brazil, 66, Fool on a Hill. I was playing this song, playing this album, and wearing this album out when I was in high school. I think the last, oh, one more. Two more, actually. I think I went over um, 10 by one or two. This had to make my list. What's Going On by Marvin Gaye. This, as far as I'm concerned, the greatest album ever made. I mean, the brother hit it out of the park. The, 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 the lyrics are tight. Um, you know, it's well mixed, well conceived. The singing is, is fabulous. He has some some you know meaning behind his songs he was trying to say something and at the same time created a musical masterpiece what's going on by marvin gay makes my list and the last one at least i believe it's the last one and it is this one i was listening to in the early 80s when it came out gosh maybe 80 81 somewhere around that time frame it's a collaboration of george benson and the great quincy jones george benson Give Me the Night. This is an underrated album that doesn't get the props it deserves. has great compositions, great songs. Amazing playing by the great George Benson. There's this beautiful song on here called Turn Out the Lamplight. Star of the Story is a, an amazing song. And Give Me the Light. The uh, collaboration of George Benson and the great Quincy Jones. George Benson, Give Me the Night. So those are 10, 11, 12 albums that I can't live without. They had a lasting impression on me. They hit me the right way at the right time musically. And uh, they had an a impact in terms of the direction of music I was listening to. A lot of them may not be the greatest albums of all time.
but they did a have have an impact on me great, greatly musically. And so they make the top 10 list of 10 albums I cannot live without. They're very influential in my um, musical direction. So I put them in the top 10 albums I cannot live without. Like I said, these weren't any in any specific order, just 10, uh, 10, 11, 12 random albums. Please leave yours in the comment section below. I really appreciate it. Thank you for taking the time to view my video. I don't take for granted. Please like and subscribe. God bless, strong love, and please keep the peace worldwide.